Happy Mum, Happy Baby is brought to you in association with Fisher-Price. Their innovative toys are designed to be loved by both parents and children at every age and stage, giving us a helping hand throughout our journey so that we can focus on the most important job in the world, parenting. Hello and welcome to another episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's episode, she's a classical singer, the classical singer I would say. It's Catherine Jenkins. Oh, thank you. Hi. How Hi. are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm <laughs> really good. Thanks. So nice to see you. I know. We, we met years ago, a couple yes. of years ago, when I just, I think I just had my second and you only had one. I know. And Things I, have changed massively. Oh, no, you've got two and I've got three. <laughs> I know. There's, there's extra people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Because you're in the middle of massive promo at the moment. Yes. Um, so I've got a new album out, which means I'm sort of juggling that. And my son is seven months old. Um, so it's actually a really, it, it's a different thing now learning learning the juggle. But I'm, it's a happy juggle. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Literally, it seems like every time I switch my TV, the TV is like, oh, hi, Catherine. <laughs> I know. I know. It feels like that, too. <laughs> it feels like it's like I'm literally either with my baby or walking into a television studio or doing something like that. So, yeah. But it's, it's fine. I, I find that such a... Knowing that something's coming up, that I'm going to have time off, it kind of gives me that little bit of extra energy. Yes. I definitely feel like sort of the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And... Um, yeah, it's but it, it's great. I, I'm making sure that I balance it enough that I get my time at home, my cuddles with with the two, and and sort of have my mummy time, which I feel like I really need to be able to then go to work and do a good job. That's really interesting. So it kind of fuels you. Yeah, it definitely does. It's definitely also given me a stronger sense of sort of priorities. So mm -hmm. when I go to work, I'm making sure I say yes to the things that I feel like I absolutely have to do or want to do. And anything else, like the, the stuff that falls in the gray areas is a definite no. Yeah. And so when I go to work, I'm going to do something I, I know is important or I really love. Mm. So it's actually making me enjoy work a little bit more as well. I actually, um, uh, we're skipping forward here, but that's oh, sorry. fine, that's fine, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but uh, I actually was, uh, when I was l looking into, you know, if a ch uh, into researching I guess for today uh, I came across um, the fact that you were doing a show when Xander was seven weeks old five weeks old five weeks old <laughs> yeah. five weeks and a big show uh, no actually I did so I did I did a smaller one when he was five weeks and okay. then I did a big one when he was seven weeks and the thing is it's it's so hard so in classical music we book really far yeah. in advance so we actually book things 18 months ahead right and obviously you can't plan when you're going to get pregnant no. so I had to cancel quite a lot of international stuff in the time that I was not able to fly and when I had mm -hmm. when I had him. And then after that point you sort of feel well, well, now if I cancel these, I could technically do them. Is there a way that I could go and do them and, and come back as quickly as possible so we can get back into the bubble as, as yeah. soon as we can? And it, I'm just not one for letting people down. So I, I, I did it and I took him to the to the one at the seven week where we were at the Royal Albert Hall. And actually it was an amazing memory. He was in the arms of one of my friends who's a the best baritone in the world and he sang him to sleep and he's never he'll never know that but I have the video of him doing it and and so it was actually I'm really glad that I shared that with him and yeah. so it was nice just to sort of pop out of my pajamas go and sing at but the Alba home and get back in so hard I think well I think there's two, there's two things there second time around you're kind of you know you're letting yourself in for, yeah so you are a bit more relaxed because like I've done it before yeah but also knowing how difficult that first bit can be and yeah. not knowing you know physically as well I imagine, does pregnancy and everything affect your voice? So pregnancy makes your voice better because the hormones that go through your body apparently sort of, you know, relax the muscles yeah. and the voice is a muscle. So everything is nice and relaxed and you sound sort of richer and, and fuller and everything. Um, so it was really nice to sing during that time. But I think more in the performer space, mm. when I st the, the idea of going back and singing at the Albert Hall was, you know, exciting. Yeah. But when I actually stood on the stage... You know, having been at home with sort of no makeup and PJs yeah. and feeding and all that kind of stuff, to then be sort of dolled up standing on the stage, I did have a moment of, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you must be, must be nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but it must have felt so overwhelming from yeah. having literally wanting, well, I always feel like I don't want anyone's eyes on me, but you know, you're just there with your boob or whatever, and then all of a sudden having thousands of faces looking at you I know and I was literally you know I was going on the uh, about to do the red carpet backstage and I was breastfeeding and breast pads and <laughs> pumps and I'm now I need to go on the, now I need to be on the carpet and look glamorous but I just don't feel it but anyway and all the faff as well the faff. people <laughs> touching you 
It's everything. Yeah, you know, I got everything. through it. I got, got through, through it and it was fun. It. <laughs> what about getting into a dress though? Well, yes. You're quite a slim lady anyway, but I think anyone five weeks after giving yeah, birth, you feel, slightly, you feel a bit yeah. like... Oh. I felt, I've, uh, yeah, I definitely felt quite self-conscious of it, but my attitude in pregnancy was to try and keep up my fitness stuff yeah. because, you know, my job is physical, so yeah. I wanted to feel strong at the other end of it as yeah. much as I could. Definitely that was second, that, the second time around, that was much harder to try and stick really? to a physical routine because, you know, you're right looking around. after the first. Yeah. Um, but I, so, so I felt like I still, I still felt well, um, you know, I just needed to, you know, lose a little bit of weight. But at that point, it was the least of my worries. I was thinking, you know, I'm in a dress. That's, that's the I'm achievement. In. <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> I just can't. For me, I, I just, yeah, I think. But then that's your world. Yes. So at least it is something that you are semi comfortable in, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it, it, like I said, it's all about the priorities. At that point, yeah. it's like. You know, I'm here, I'm with my baby, that's, yeah. that, that's fine. And how amazing <laughs> that you can take your baby along. I love that. I, I, feel, I feel so proud when I get to share it with them because I grew up in, um, in New South Wales where it wasn't a privileged upbringing. I learned to sing in church, but my parents didn't take me to the opera and stuff like that. Yeah. And so then to, I didn't see, I don't think, an, an orchestra until I was in my teens. So that for my children to now be like running around in rehearsal amongst an orchestra, I just think that's such a nice thing to be able to give them. Well, and the fact that that's their normal. Yeah, that is their normal. But they just think that everyone else does that. Yeah. <laughs> like it literally Buzz starts asking to see friends on TV it's like Aww. not everyone's on TV <laughs> <laughs> like that can't happen <laughs> yeah. um, how uh, what was your upbringing like um, so our, our town of Neath is um, quite a small town mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody uh, quite a strong church community because my mum taught Sunday school I had a really great um, childhood I look back it, it up until forty, up, up until fifteen, my dad sadly passed away from cancer when I was fifteen. Um, but up until then, just you know, really amazing, very you know, good close family, lots of aunties and uncles and cousins that are all very close, lots of singing, lots of memories of singing and things like that. But things definitely changed at fifteen when yeah. when we had to cope with not was, having dad. Was your dad the main carer? Yeah, right? so my mum was, um, she was a breast screening uh, mammographer and my dad, my dad took early retirement. So he was like my, my biggest supporter. He would drive me around to piano lessons and choir practice and stuff like that and spend a lot of time just giving me sort of a quiet sense of confidence. Yeah. Um, they weren't pushy in any way, which I really respect. But they just, you know, they were just there and encouraging me to follow my, my passion. I... I mean, to where you must have been then to now. I mean, your mum and dad must just pinch <laughs> themselves. Like, well, I think, I think my mum is just she's so grounded and yeah. she's very Welsh and she sort of, she has a, she'll say it every now and again. She'll say, "I'm proud of you," and it comes once in a while. And when she does say it, it really you know means a lot. But she's yeah. also, I think, she's very good at keeping. You, keeping everything real. Right. So I remember once when I was singing, going to be singing at the Albert Hall, and I called her and I said, "Hey, Mum, I, I forgot to say I'm going to be singing at the Albert Hall in two weeks. If you'd like to come." And she said, uh, "Oh, I've got a tennis match that <laughs> night. I've seen you enough times at the Albert Hall." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, thanks, Mum." <laughs> what do you think your dad would make of it all? Oh, I think he would love it. Yeah. I, I, and and I do I do feel him with me. Do you? you know a lot. I yeah. I since he passed, you know, I know some people believe in things like this and some people don't, but I've had quite vivid dreams where we've talked. And because I don't know him as an adult, I don't know the in my adult self I don't know him. So we have adult conversations, which mm -hmm. is so it's so interesting. I'm always so fascinated by it. And then um, whenever I step out on stage, I always, without fail, have a word with him and ask him to bless the concert and bless my voice. And so he's always in my thoughts. Oh, I really wish he could lovely. have seen my see my kids because my son is has his middle has his name. So he's Sandra oh, really? Robert Selwyn after my father. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I guess it, it's it's those moments, isn't it, of you know getting married, then having children. Yeah. That you really. You know, you kind of go, oh, so it's such a shame they're not there. Mm, yeah. Does it make you think of your kids and you? Because I think every parent anyway kind of goes, what if something happened to yeah. me? Is that, you know, yeah. you, you can't help but catastrophize things, even <laughs> if it's not a, you know, there's, you're in no threat Im yeah. immediately. But does, the, does having gone through it yourself, does it make it even a little, like, that a little bit closer? It's probably my biggest worry. Mm -hmm. 
especially because my husband also lost his dad to cancer at a young age. So right. for us, it's sort of our normal. Mm. Um, my best friend at school, um, Christy, she she lost him and we were the only two children to lose a parent and we were best friends in the same year at school wow. and it happened all. So to me, it's it, it it's possible. You know, yeah. it can happen and I've seen it and I've, I've, it's happened to us and so I do worry about it all the time and I think it's affected the way I live my life since I've had the children in terms of trying to be healthy and strong and be around as long as possible yeah. for them because I do, I do worry how if something like this happened how they might come out of it the other side. I was lucky. I had a great grief counsellor when I was younger. Mm. Um, well, and you do a lot of work now, don't yeah. you? With children yeah, there's a really it. good charity called Grief Encounter. And they deal with um, children who've lost a parent or a sibling. And they, you know, through different programmes, help them to get the other side of their, of their loss. Mm. And, you know, I wish I'd had something like that in my life at that time but um I recently did a master class with them so I, there's a song on the album called Jealousy of the Angels and and I found so Which much beautiful oh, right? thank you. <laughs> I, I found so much comfort in it when I first heard it because it's the idea that God you know God needed another angel so that's why your loved one was taken away mm. and I found I it, it helped me and when I, when we put the video online it had such a response from from adults saying this is reminding me of so and so and sharing their story and I actually thought gosh if it's helping adults I really yeah. think this would help children yeah. so I went and did a master class with the Grief Encounter Choir and these are little ones you know little five year olds um, and you can't help but see your children in those children as well you you, you can't help mm. um, you know some had lost um, family in Grenfell and we sang the song together and you know we did a class and then afterwards we, we held a candle and we all talked about who we were singing for and managed to keep it together oh, I'm even getting upset now thinking about it but we ma I managed to keep it together until I walked through the door and then I lost it because mm. these little gorgeous children you know and oh, they were amazing do you make you go home and hold your kids a little bit tighter definitely yeah mm. it's just so it's awful isn't it? it kind of feels like an innocence is almost taken away yeah yeah, and you just, I think you just pray that if that, something like that happens, that there's a good circle, you know, to, to surround. And that's what, I, that's what I tried to talk to the children. I said, like, I, I have had this happen to me. I know how you feel. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, you can use this positively. Like every time I sing, I sing for mm -hmm. my dad. And, you know, you can, you can turn this into a, a positive force in your life. So I was just really trying to help, and I've I, I've asked them to come and do a concert with me at some point. Really? So it would be, I think it'd be really lovely to have them on the stage yeah. and to give them something else to be working towards. How talking about your dad and, and your children? How do you bring him into their world? Because obviously it's that thing, isn't yeah. it? He's such a p massive part of you and your upbringing and who you are. Like, but you want to keep his memory alive. Yeah, we haven't had the conversation yet about death or anything like that right. so it's really hard to sort of yeah. I'm, I'm just talking about him as if he's there you know I show photos of both grandfathers mm. and we just you know oh that's that's you know granddad Selwyn oh that's granddad Bob and we just talk about it and they at the moment she just accepts it and looks at them and I you know I'm trying to just keep that alive but mm. eventually I'll tell them you know all the stories and yeah. show videos I recently actually one of the things I really wanted to do was go through all my mum's old videotapes yeah. and I had them all transferred onto DVDs <laughs> specifically to show the children one Aww. day that this was your granddad because otherwise they'll never get to see anything yeah is it strange looking back yeah but lovely yeah. because I don't actually have that many photo photos of us together so it was really amazing to see like the moving stuff from our holidays and mm. him talking just hearing his voice again yeah. was amazing so yeah that was that was a, a job that I thought was really important to sort of lock them away and then when they want to look at it one day I'll get them out. <laughs> Has family always been really important to you? Yeah. Yeah, it comes, it, comes, it comes with that thing of being Welsh mm -hmm. as well. It's, that, it's such a stereotypical thing, but anyone I know who's Welsh, <laughs> it is just so true. Well, I think you have, in we're in Wales, we have two kinds of aunties. Okay. We have real aunties, okay. red aunties, <laughs> and then basically everyone who's your mum's friend is also an auntie. <laughs> so you've got this whole circle of, you know, like it feels like a bigger family even than you have. And yeah. my mum's got a twin sister and a sister and a brother. So we're all, you know, we're all really close. And, mm. and um, yeah, I grew up with that. Definitely, it was obvious that you know to be 
to be a friend with your sister, to be, you know, cousins and almost be sisters was an important thing to carry through. So, yeah, it's it's still important. And and did you always know that you wanted to have a family? Yes, but I was never broody. So mm. that's something that I remember at 27 having a sort of panic that um, I was working so hard. I felt like I was on this, you know treadmill of working but not meeting anybody and am I, am I going to ever have children and that's something I so want mm. um, and I you know sort of give it a bit of time and just thought okay this is something that may happen later and I'm actually really happy that it, it happened at the right time when I met my husband we're both very very family oriented people he's such a good son and, and brother and we met and sort of very quickly talked about it and said we, we both wanted to have children so it moved pretty quickly when we got together. Ah, And what was it like finding out that you were pregnant? I was thrilled. <laughs> but it was, I mean, it was it was planned yeah. in that, um, you know, it was quite soon after we got married. It was about three months after we got married. I was so excited to tell my husband. Because really? He's, he's, he's an artist and he's he is very romantic in his gestures. So and, how did you tell him? Oh, well, no, it was, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a big thing, but I remember... We were in in our apartment, and he was sort of sitting down by the window, and it was January, and it was I think it was snowing outside, and I'd known for about I'd known from seven o'clock in the morning, but there were people in the apartment, and I didn't have the time to tell oh, yeah. him. So I kept I love it. Didn't have the time. Well, I want I wanted it to be like us on our own. I didn't yeah. want it to be like you know yeah. the, the man coming to fix the shower was walking past as <laughs> like break the news, and I told him, and he's I just remember him being sort of like. <gasps> No, really? Oh my. And he was so happy. And then we both cried. And oh. so, yeah, it was, it, it, I, I just felt, I didn't know how easy it was going to be. And yeah. um, have lots of friends that have gone through, you know, really uh, sort of struggles with it. So um, it was just a relief, I think. Yeah, it is that, isn't it? Because neither of you, I think you spend your whole life not getting pregnant. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, no, I've got to switch my mind up now. Yeah. <laughs> but can I? You don't it's, know until uh, you start trying. And I was 34. So when right. I had Aaliyah, I was 35 and so therefore technically a geriatric mother, as it said That's on my crazy. form. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> Get some before I'm out, <laughs> So you don't know at that stage if it's going to be harder. Yeah. Know. So kind of relief. Yes, a lot of relief. And what was your pregnancy like? It was really good. It was really good. Um... I find that actually when I'm pregnant, I'm I'm calmer than usual. I feel like it sort of gives me a bit of, I don't know if it's the hormones or what, but mm. actually s sort of stabilizes me yeah. a bit and settles me. Um, and I just sort of get on with it. You know, I'm, I, of course, like everybody feel tired and feel a bit sick, but generally it went quite well. Yeah. And, and what were your thoughts heading towards actually meeting your child? Did you find out the sex? Yes. You did? I did. Why did you not? No. Oh, Never really? Have, no. oh, I, I could not. I felt like there was enough change happening that yeah. I sort of needed to be prepared. Okay. Um, and I'm glad I. I'm glad I did because I really thought that I was going to have a boy on the first one. Oh, really? So when I had a when I knew I was having a girl, that was a, such a shock. Ready. And then I enjoyed so much having a girl that I was sort of secretly thinking, oh, I'd love another girl, but I know we should really have a have a boy because my husband would love a boy. And, yeah. and then when they told us the other way around, said, are you having a boy? I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm really glad I had this news now because I need to adjust. I need to there get my head out of pink. There is a pressure, though, isn't there? <laughs> I think there's a pressure kind of to intuitively know what you're carrying. Mm. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. impossible to know. Even though I knew I was having a boy, well, you had 50% chance. Yeah. You know? and, I mean, and everybody... Like things that they know and just telling you uh, what they think it is. And but when you're out on about and meeting loads of people, that must be so annoying. <laughs> everyone, my mum does it all the time to everyone. You are definitely having a girl. De 100%. I'm like, mum, you don't know. Is she ever right? <laughs> I don't know. I never see it through. <laughs> She's so adamant. <laughs> uh, and what was it like meeting, meeting a Alea, isn't it? Alea. 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 Um, one of the things that I sort of look back on with a little bit of embarrassment is yeah. I remember the the last three weeks. So she was born in September and it was mm -hmm. the end of the summer. And I remember sitting with Andrew and um, sitting on the beach and sort of watching the sun go down and knowing it was the end of an era right. and feeling really emotional and nervous about the change and just thinking, but I, I love our life. <laughs> like I don't, I want to, I want this baby, but at the same time, I'm really scared about yeah. how things are going to change and what if it changes us? And I look back and I think, oh, 
you see, crazy person. Like it was the best change ever. <laughs> I, I think it must be a natural feeling, but yeah. at the same time, you know, I when I talk to mums to be and I say if you have that moment, I think it's normal, but I promise you it's gonna be just incredible. Because nothing is ever gonna be the same. But that doesn't no. mean that that's a bad thing. No. But you don't know that going into it. You don't know that going into it. And then I remember when she was born just hearing her loud really she was loud <laughs> and I remember the the doctor saying like oh this one's feisty and I, and I thought yes go girl that's what I want I want a feisty girl and just um locking you know the locking of the eyes yeah. like she she cried and she cried until she was on me and then we look we looked at each other and it was like I know you. Like I love you, and it was. I I tell her all the time that she loves to hear the story. Yeah. And I say we looked at each other and we knew we loved each other, and oh. and so I'm I'm really I feel very blessed to have that relationship with yeah. with her. So did you feel that bond instantly? I did. Yeah. I did. With my second, I felt um, I with a little bit of a complication before he was um, born. I got a thing called cholestasis. What's that? It's um, actually something that I think people should talk about more yeah. because it's so. Throughout my pregnancy, I had quite, in, quite itchy skin. Yes. Um, and I thought it was just stretching. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I kept thinking, oh, this is really uncomfortable. Complained about it to the doctor. And eventually, um, they did a blood test. And it's when your liver's not working properly. Mm-hmm. And it can have really serious effects. Mm-hmm. So um, when, he, when he came along, I was, worried. I, was, I was more worried about whether there'd been a complication to him. But thankfully, touch wood, you know, everything was fine. Yeah, it, uh, having that little bit of anxiety around mm, it. Yeah. I actually, my bile acids were actually funny the last time round. So they thought I had that, right. well, a version of it. So yeah. they were going to induce me a little bit earlier. Yeah. But thankfully, I, he came early. Yeah, it was quite scary because it's sort of a, you have to deal with it there and then. And, and so. especially with Google and stuff as well, because you yeah. then can't help but Google things. Yeah. You know, like and it, But it kept coming up as normal. And I think that's the thing is that whenever I've then talked to other other ladies expecting and they're sort of like oh, I'm really itching I said just go get yeah. the blood test because it can lead to something and it's, I, it's I'd never heard of it before mm. so I didn't realise it was serious yeah how one thing I've been thinking because I think when we last saw each other you were living in New York I think part time part time yeah. so how how have you decided where to grow your family it's going to be in London yes. really so my husband's a New Yorker mm-hmm. So we were up until that point because I think we felt the freedom of not having to be in the school system yeah. so we could go back and forth because my husband works in sort of American hours. Yeah. Even um, when he's here? Yeah, poor thing. So, oh, I know. What time does he go to bed? 3 a.m. Oh, I know. Does that mean he gets out of the mornings? Uh, I do the mornings. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Yeah, I do the mornings. And he's not... But to be fair to him, he's yeah. not... As soon as he hears the... The children, he wants to get up with them anyway, really? so he just doesn't sleep, basically. But because he's a New Yorker, we were going back and forth and visiting family, but we've decided that we just, you know, we want Leah to go to school here, so right. we're, we're settled. Um, as of September, we were sort of fully committed to being here. And, and you know, I, I love living in the UK, so that yeah. makes me really happy. And, of course, it means they get British accents, which is <laughs> very important. <laughs> <laughs> you like it if a little bit of Welsh it gets in there somewhere. <laughs> a little bit of Welsh is great, but every time she comes up with a word like uh, trash oh. or sidewalk, it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no I was talking to a parent the other day and they were saying that their child says all those things now because of TV. Oh, really? All those words are, are in the programmes that their kids are watching. Right. So they say st- stuff like trash or garbage. Oh, yeah, garbage. She says that sometimes too. I don't like it. I just I, I just quietly, you know, correct it. And But I've noticed that she is learning to do them. She'll say trash when she's in New York. Oh. And she'll say bin when she's here. So that's okay too. Is it nice knowing that you've now got a base for the majority of the time? Yeah, and uh, you can see that they, you know, they're sort of... They're, they're settled. The children yeah. are settled, and they, you know, they were able to sort of do play dates and make more friends, and that yeah. kind of because it was sort of split at that time. And it's just also just I'm like I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the the process of her going to to nursery and sort of getting to know the other mums. And yeah, it's it's been really lovely so far. Well, it must give you a like a a schedule more like of a routine. Yeah. For years, you've been traveling around the world, getting on a plane here, there, and everywhere. You've sung for the Pope. You've sung for the Queen. Like you've <laughs> sung for basically everyone. Your life is so varied. And actually, because I think we felt it when we first had Buzz, we were like, "Oh, kids are easy. You just take them everywhere." But then when they get into the school system, it's not actually. You're on lockdown. Yes. And there's actually something 
wonderful in that. <laughs> You've got your little timetable which says, okay, you need to swimming stuff that day. And, and it actually it's something quite settling. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. And I think she likes it too. Yeah. She goes to bed at night and says, mommy, what's tomorrow? Oh, and, right. you know, we talk about the different things that she's going to be doing. And, yeah, I sort of see, I'm seeing her blossoming in that. And, and I, I like it that we've got a sort of a set routine and I get to take her here and there and do those and then get mummy time on the weekends. And it, oh, it's, I, I love it. <laughs> it is one and, and seeing them make friends and grow like and develop in different ways I think it's just yeah it's, it's so when wonderful. she uh, when I you know the first the first few weeks of school and she mm. went in and sort of screeched when she saw this little girl and, and sort of suddenly gave her a hug and held her hand and just walked it didn't give me a second look just <laughs> walked off in and I, I was so happy it's like oh my gosh you made a friend <laughs> <laughs> well because I think part of you just remembers being a kid and how hard it is yeah yeah, and I'm just like, okay, we've done the first bit. You've made a friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but isn't it scary though that they're already at that age? It's flying by. Yeah, Xander's got teeth. <gasps> and that's um, a big moment. That's a big. Did moment. you notice when they were coming through? Because with my second, me and my sister were talking with her about her first having teeth, and I was like, I don't think Buddy's got teeth. Oh my god, he's got two coming through. Literally, I was like, I'm a terrible mother. <laughs> I definitely knew with Aaliyah. <laughs> right. I think I don't know if it's that Xander is just a boy and a lot sort of less dramatic yeah. and sort of two came through didn't like literally see, they were they exactly poked the through same. didn't know he didn't he bless me didn't make a noise or anything about it but then actually the next two are coming through and then he had a bad time with the okay. next two so yeah I think we sort of that was the calm before the storm. <laughs> yeah. And how are you finding it having two? I love it. It's definitely much harder in mm. that you're emotionally and physically pulled in in the two directions and I find sort of bedtime because I really want to get the time like I, bedtime is my favorite time with them reading stories where yeah. we love reading so to get to them both and cuddle them and to, I'm trying I haven't quite managed to crack the schedule of getting the, the most amount of time with both of them you yeah. know the, so I need to work on that a bit better but I, I love it and they love each other which is really really good to see that they we didn't have any um no jealousy or anything no so I never said that I was having a baby to Aaliyah I always said that Aaliyah was having a brother oh and so she I think she honestly thinks he's been put here for her <laughs> and so when he when he cries it's like mummy my brother's hungry give him some milk <laughs> and if that's gonna work then it's a fluke but it's gonna yeah. work so yeah that they, they love each other and and I, I just think that's something that gets better and better and better does it? Yeah, when they can run around together oh, and talk. I can't wait. When they start talking to each other. Yeah. Oh. It's so beautiful. <laughs> uh, and you've breastfed, haven't you? Have you breastfed both? Yes. How have you found that? Definitely harder the second time around. Really? In that, um, I think with, you know, with Aaliyah, because it was just my emphasis and, yeah. and priority was on her. So um, we were on a just a much better routine. But I think with... With Xander, we it, it's gone well, but I've also had to do a lot of expressing while I've been, yeah. you know, away at work. And so, yeah, I fed him longer than yeah. I did with Leah. Um, but I I think it's because I know I'm not going to have any more. Yeah. Um, I think we're done at two. And right. so I feel like I'm I'm not ready to say goodbye to it just yet. Yeah. I, I really enjoy that time with him. Mm. It makes me feel like I have... A, a purpose with him you know oh. that's really sort of that's my my time that nothing interrupts with him yeah. so um now he's got teeth so I need to think about it <laughs> I always said that I would only feed until they were six months or they had teeth right and then it was so complicated that I carried on beyond the six months and How then long got till? teeth a year for the other two the other two and I'm still going at the moment I'm only three months in um but then it got to six months and they got teeth and they never bit me Right. So I was like, well, yeah. I'll keep going then, shall I? Okay. <laughs> it's funny though, isn't it, when you're working and you're trying to fit in where to express? Yes. And I found this most incredible thing. Mm -hmm. um, this I wish I'd known it on the first one. Right. Have you ever heard of a milk stalk? No. Oh, it's brilliant. It's a uh, like a self-contained unit yeah. that you, it, you use it once, but you fill up with your milk, you press a button, it goes, shh, dry ice, and it stays perfect temperature for three days. No! Yeah. And if you wanted to, you can send it FedEx back to the baby or you carry it with you on the plane. So, you know, if you've got X, if you're with your baby and you've got extra. Yeah. You can then just make sure you can, that you don't have to waste it if you're traveling. This has changed my life. 
That's amazing. I know. It's been re- it's been something I wish I knew on the first one. Yeah. I don't know if it existed then, but it's I been mean, really good. I mean, I think good. I want to do that just to have the, the I know. dry house. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a science. It's like you'd see in a super movie. <laughs> Superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is the most unattractive place or the least glamorous place you've had to express because I have been in multiple offices oh yeah storage rooms yes yeah I mean I've even I even went to um, I went to see a, a, a theatre production of a friend of ours it was a really long show oh, um, no. so, <laughs> so I even went in like the back office of the theatre I you? asked I said I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to yeah. make it through this Three and a half hour play. Um, so I was in the in the back office somewhere. Oh, offices are a regular thing. And yeah. also, you know, when I'm away filming songs of praise or something like that, of often it's in a you know yeah. in a vestry, um, oh, yeah. in a car. You know, I mean, it's everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, <laughs> wherever wherever you can. I've only just found uh, this like silicone type thing that you can stick on that makes no sound. So if I'm somewhere where you know I don't want to hear that, <laughs> I just use that. <laughs> can you can you just text me that later <laughs> so I can see what that's all about? <laughs> and it's cheap as chips, I tell you. <laughs> um, how did you find the the you know the what you're worrying about that that sh- that transition from being on your own timetable to becoming a mum, like having that none to one? Yeah. How did you find that? Um, yeah, it definitely takes, I think, a bit of sort of settling into it. I was so obsessed with, with Aaliyah in the first place yeah. that I was, um, I was happy that I had taken a little bit of time out with, you know, to sort How of... How long did you give yourself first time out? Uh, four or five months before I went back to any singing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just really loved getting into the, into a schedule with her mm-hmm. and just the bonding time. So that, that was, I found the naught to one was actually... Some a little bit easier than the one to two. The yeah, two was okay. like blew my mind. Really? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it must have been weird for you because you are so go 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 to suddenly stop and be. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Just be there. Yeah. It must be. It must have been quite. Well, just different. I I I always thought about how it would be because I've been on tour for something like fifteen years, mm. and I was thinking, you know, how am I going to be when I stop and have children? Mm. And actually. It was really lovely just to take some time and be with the family and focus and in you naturally become, I think, anyway, in the household, the last priority or yeah. the least important person because you're looking after everybody else. But I really enjoyed that. I just it and must I enjoyed be quite just strange then for you because when you are you are on tour, you are the most important person. Yes, and so and I think that, but that's what I I think that's what I love about <laughs> yeah. being a mum is that I just am, I just become mummy. Yeah. when I'm home and so sometimes it makes it harder when I perform to find Catherine again to yeah. be to sort of switch back out of the mummy thing and I had an amazing conversation with Leah on it's on Saturday night I we pre, pre-recorded a concert for radio and um Aaliyah was in the concert with me so we were listening <laughs> to it then on the radio yeah. at home while she was finishing her dinner and the lady back referenced me as um ladies and gentlemen Catherine Jenkins and I've always been worried about this conversation but she said to me mummy Who's Catherine Jenkins? <laughs> and then she said, there was a big pause, and she said, are you Catherine Jenkins? <laughs> and I said, um, yeah, oh. I am, but um, I'm firstly Mummy. That's a, that's my main name, okay, yeah. is Mummy. I was going to go into explaining stage names, because I said, and then my, my other name is Catherine Levitas, the same name as you and Daddy, and yeah. for all the important things, I'm Catherine Levitas. And then she just said, just like a child would say, she said, and everybody else, you're Catherine Jenkins. I said, yeah, exactly. And she said, okay. And that was it. That was the conversation. So it's amazing how some, something you might be worried about talking to them about actually, yeah. she just took it in, in her stride, and it was it was interesting. Yeah, it must it, it, it must be lovely having them be a part of the things that you do. I love it. Yeah, I I, I like to try and share them, share all the artistic experiences, mm. and you know, just to and selfishly just to be able to take them with me and have them hang out with me as much as possible. And that's why I, I think it was a little bit easier to come back to work. I always feel for mums who go back into, you know, a sort of nine to five job because that wrench must be really mm. hard. But to be able to sort of take them with me as much as possible definitely helped with getting my head back into coming back to work. Yeah. And and do you feel that when you're at work with them that you are able to kind of focus? Because <laughs> for me, I know that I've got to do I've got to do a few podcasts. Where I've got to take Max, and I'll be like, oh, 
How, what, how do day. you do it? Oh, I'm hoping you'll just be in a different room. You know. <laughs> Somebody else is Someone looking else after Because he can't be in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's really distracting, isn't it? Mm. It's sort of I I um the, thinking of that first one back at the Brits, you know, I had this like long train and literally Aaliyah was running underneath it, thinking it was a tent, <laughs> and then I did radio on the weekend and, and I had to take her with me. Um and I sat her in the control booth and you know, I put a little bit of frozen on for her for ten minutes, which is a real treat for her. I love it you're saying ten minutes. Ten, just ten minutes. Ten, well any more than that and it just makes her a crazy person. But um she sat and then, you know, she was really quiet for the ten minutes yeah. while I went in the studio and and it's it, I guess it's just learning the little things mm. that you know when you need to pull out the big guns yeah. to keep them focused for whatever you need. Yeah. Yeah. It's that thing, isn't it? You kind of want to bring them with you and you do, but you've also got to focus on what you're doing and what your role is and Yeah. It is hard. But you obviously with your mum. Yeah. You grew up with having the female in the house. Yeah. Off doing a really important job and providing for because I always say that providing for your family as a mum for so long it's it's been about being there, being in the home. But actually it's evolved and actually we realised that providing from both sets, both parents or however many parents people have, it's actually something very different. It yeah. means something different to everyone. Yeah. And my mum, I remember her having a conversation with us about you know not sort of pushing us but you know girls you can be whatever you want to be but you know however you however hard you work now in school will Mm. depend those things it's all about what you put into it you'll get out of it at the end and I remember looking at her and thinking you know she's I wouldn't say my mum was ambitious but she was a hard worker and she definitely passed on the work ethic to me and Laura Mm. you know in that way and and I did think that I would probably stop completely when I had the kids. And did I you? wonder, yeah, I did. And I still probably have a bit of battle with that now. I still have a bit of guilt when I, you know, that sort of thing of like, should, you know, you get the odd day where you're, everything goes wrong and then you think, like, should I, should I be going to work today or should I just be staying at home? But yeah. I think with having a daughter first made me think, actually, I, I want to do what my, my mum did with me and I want to show her that I'm, passionate and dedicated to something that I love Mm. so that I can try and teach her that you know she's going to have things in life but she has to work for them and she you know she has to appreciate those things and I really really want to teach that lesson to her yeah that's really lovely I like that it's hard isn't it because I think because that role is changing as the mum and still working I think people sometimes feel like well why are you doing everything else if you feel so bad yeah but you're a human and you're multifaceted and you can't, If the, it, you know, you want to keep doing what you love. And I do think in that you're showing, like you're teaching a lesson. Yeah, it's, it's, I find it's, it, it's something I would imagine I'm going to struggle with going forward in that. I think as women, we're taught that we can do everything and we mm. can do it all. And having, having had children, I now believe that women are just incredible. And the fact that the body can do this, I really think it's amazing I have so much more respect for for females that we can do this yeah. but I think that we think we can do it all and we can we have the opportunities but then we beat ourselves up when it's not going a hundred percent to plan that's yeah. what I well that's what I find I'm doing so um the lesson since having Xander has been you're not superwoman and that's okay it's it's okay there were there are definitely going to be days when it all comes crashing down mm. and just don't, you know, just don't feel too bad about it because the other days are going okay. Yeah. There will just be times like this and you just got to accept it. So I, I I definitely am doing that. Do you have, and especially now, I would imagine, now that you're so busy, yeah. do you have days that you really struggle? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, I mean, yesterday, like, last night, Aaliyah was so tired mm. and I did a, quite a long day. Uh, it, it's been a long week with lots of very, like, 4 a.m. starts and getting in at 1 o'clock in the morning yeah. and trying to fit in all, all that kind of stuff. And Lee was so tired and she was just having tantrum after tantrum after tantrum, but she didn't want to go to bed. Yeah. And it was crazy in our house. And it was one of those things where she's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> someone come and help me. <laughs> and, and yeah, and, it, and it, you, I, I can get a bit tearful in that yeah. sort of situation. And then then you wake up the next day and she's lovely and she's back, yeah. she's she's rested and she's back to her lovely, charming self. And okay, on it's to the next It's hard not to take that personally, isn't it? When they're having that full-on meltdown or they're yeah. playing up, you, yeah. you know. And it could be, for both of us, that struggle of you've not been here and now you're here. And 
it, you know, it's. I always find if I've been away and I come back, I get the cold shoulder, and it takes me a while uh, to kind of win them back. Yeah, uh, I think that the I think that Xander can do that a little bit. He can really? sort of you know turn his head away, but Ali is pretty good because my husband and I make sure that one of us is in the house yeah. at all times. Oh, in, really? So Andrew works from home as well. So. Um, so usually, you know, one of us is there making a fuss of her. Yeah. Nothing's really changed that much in her world since Xander came along. Um, and so I feel like she's got somebody's... So she's not sort of lacking in, in the attention, but she... I definitely feel that she'll sort of sidle up to me more and she'll say, oh, mummy, come, let's come and do this together. Or, mummy, let's go dress up. And, and I know that that's her saying, like, I've missed you and can yeah. we go and do something together now? What sort of things do you do as a family? We love going to shows, mm. so um, we go to, you know, take, I, I think Children's Theatre in London's really good. So good, isn't it? Yeah. I took her to see, um, I, I like to go and do all the Julia Donaldson sort mm-hmm. of things that she's reading, yeah. um, but I took her to see The Lion King the other day, and uh, I didn't know how well she would take to it, only being three. Yeah. I cried. I was really? so, Because her face was, she was so, <laughs> it was like she was in Africa and she was, her face, oh, it was amazing. It's one of the highlights of my life, honestly. <laughs> so the thing is, Nick, well, I always found growing up that if you went to theatre or something and you took a friend along and you couldn't help but watch it, go, oh, I wonder what they're thinking. I what... But when you go with a child, you literally, you don't even watch what's on stage. You literally just watch their reaction the whole way through <laughs> and your heart just melts. But there's, um, there's there's like an elephant that came down the, the down the the aisle, and stopped and sort of like the, to this little bow, just happened to be in our direction. She looked at me, oh, the elephant looked at me. <laughs> you know, just oh, it was so cute. So we like to do things like that, and um, we live near a, a big park in in London. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just a, a sun a perfect Sunday for me is just jumping in muddy puddles and mm-hmm. going to feed the ducks and then going to the pub and having a roast dinner or something all together just there's that kind of family time is just so important to us now yeah. when we're so busy and and because you grew up in Leith in Wales and you had this it's a very different life to what you have now or what yeah. you could have now yeah how do you like is is the thought of keeping them grounded and is that an important thing like is that something that you really think about yes yeah my mum was so good at teaching us, you know, sort of value of money. Mm-hmm. And my parents, they never they never sort of had a credit card. If they wanted something, they had to save up for it. And and it's it's really important to me that Aaliyah has a sense of value and, and work ethic. And yeah, and then also that she's she has friends that are, you know, from all different kinds of backgrounds. Yeah. And that she, I just, I want her to have a proper childhood like I had, you know, and just to... Yes, to travel and learn and and to be a, a, a citizen of the world. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to teach her to do, but in a responsible way. Already teach her about, you know, the environment, because I, I do a lot of conservation stuff. So already teaching her about, you know, rhino and, and elephant and going to Africa and mm. recycling and things like that. I think that you're never too young to sort of start grasping yeah. those things. Um, and, uh, and also uh, music. Like, I don't, I, I, I can't imagine music isn't a massive part of family life. Yeah, it is. Was it, what, did, were you, did you used to sing to the bump? Or was I it didn't, the bumps? I didn't sing to the bump, okay. but I was on tour with oh, the so bump. they would have heard. So they heard a lot, yeah. Were you ever aware of them when you were singing? Yeah. Really? I would sing and they would start kicking. Well, Aaliyah would kick more than Zander. Zander was, Zander almost knew, oh, mummy's, mummy's warming up, I better, better be still. <laughs> <laughs> but Aaliyah would go crazy when I start warming up. Um. So I think they know my voice. Even when we, you know, if I if I play music to him, yeah, he will stop, and he knows it's me. Um, so they they definitely know the tone of my voice. Yeah, but um, we try and we we like a dance party in our house. Oh really? So, you know, <laughs> we like to have a sort of silly ten fifteen minutes where we put on you know any kind of like, you know, sort of reggae through to disco yeah. or something. You know, at least seems to like techno, which is a worry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but we okay. put all kind of music on whatever also, she wants. How did you find out that she liked techno? <laughs> it was on some kind of playlist, and she's like, "I love this." She starts dancing. Anyway, yeah. I hope that I hope that's when that she grows out of. Yeah. Um, but we just love to sort of dance around, and and I just think it's a, a freedom. My husband's um, uh, family they did something with him when he was a, a child, which mm. was. You know, he obviously went to school, but if he ever wanted to 
go and see an opera or go to the mu- to go to the museum or something like that that they he was allowed to miss a little bit of school to go right. and do those things okay and um i think that is that kind of attitude of just you know let's just as much different kind of art as we can in the house you know if she if they want to sing great i'm not going to push them to sing yeah. they'll be who they want to be yeah. i'm really don't don't care either way um but yeah it's nice but it to, must be a part of your house like yeah do you sing like do you sing to them i sing to them every night oh. I, and i pretty much sing, sing to xander all the time and really? he is singing all the time i didn't think it was possible <laughs> for a baby to sing as much and i'm not saying he's like it's not i'm not saying he's got a voice or he's even singing a tune yeah but he is vocalizing all the time it's am- <laughs> it's amazing and when i start singing he sings with me Aww. Um, so yeah, we sing a lot in the house. What songs do you sing in the state? So for Xander, I sing um, "You Are My Sunshine," Aww. and um, you know all the little silly songs. So funny that you you are my sunshine. Now with Max, I'm kind of like, but I've got two other children. So can I sing <laughs> no. "You're My Sunshine"? You're my sunshine through two. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I have those thoughts it's too. Like, oh, that's what I can't really say. <laughs> but I see that as like that's his song. Yeah, and okay. then um, and then. Uh, the Greatest Showman. I I recorded a song called Never Enough from mm-hmm. that. Aaliyah doesn't know, the, doesn't know the film, and she doesn't know the name of the song. But she's seen me sing it in concert, so she's now renamed it Light of the Moon. So whenever I tuck her in at night, she says, "Mummy, sing Light of the Moon." So I sing that to her every single night before. Not bed. the full blown version. I do a sort of quiet acoustic version for her, <laughs> and I, and it's funny because I, I when I sing it to her, I sort of act it out a little bit and I you know I did take my hand will you share this with me and she takes my hand then the other day I found her and she was in her room actually doing all the little she was doing all the little hand things and I thought oh my gosh I think we may have got a performer in the house oh isn't that lovely though when they take something that you've given them yeah yeah it it choked me up the first time I heard her singing it yeah it must when you hear them hold a tune for you it must mean even more do you know what I mean like when when I was doing it yeah you know, yeah, it, it, I remember she wasn't singing that much. And right. I remember thinking, oh, this is strange. Like, oh, other kids are singing Twinkle Twinkle. She's she knows them. She is smiles. She listens. A bit intimidated by how well <laughs> mummy sings it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, what's wrong? Like, maybe she's just never going to sing. Out of nowhere, one day she just stood up and she sang Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid oh. from beginning to end. And I've never been prouder. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> she did a whole song. <laughs> She's sick. Yes. Does she put on shows for you or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. She'll 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 do the full acting out of the Disney princess stuff, which. I, it's it's brilliant, you know. It's nice. It it what I what I love to see is that she's she is a really girl. She's a typical girl. She loves yeah. all, and I think Xander's going to be a typical boy. And so it's nice to experience it with both of them. Yeah. They're, you know, they they look very similar, but they're definitely the girl version and the boy version. Oh, really? And so that's it's it's exciting to see yeah. the feature. So much of what you do, there's so much emotion. Like the new album, it feels so emotional listening to it. Being a mum. I feel like my emotions are all over the place. So when you're performing now, do you feel like your emotions are even more heightened than they were before because you've got this other thing there, this you, this other experience, these other emotions? Yeah, it's. I think my emotions are off the Richter scale. Really, <laughs> from from when I had the children. Yeah, I think it's just because it makes you. I don't know. Having being a mum definitely made me more patient and sympathetic and understanding and you just you just I, th- I think you just understand people's situations mm. so much in a just a more compassionate way so when I am singing a song about you know love or loss or whatever that might be I just feel it in a much deeper place yeah. now and that's why I'm drawn to those kind of songs I think I've, I've definitely my my repertoire has sort of shifted slightly this album was not about oh, let's hit all the high notes and let's sing all the big opera. It was actually what things are touching my heart mm. that I can pass on and hopefully will, you know, be an emotional experience. Just a bunch of Disney songs. That's what you should have done. My husband this keeps saying that. <laughs> really? My husband keeps saying, you should make the Disney album or the Lullaby album. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Oh. There is a song for Xander on the album, actually, which uh, I, yeah. I didn't um, intend to write. But he was asleep. I just finished feeding him, mm. born asleep. And I find, I find I pray for these children more than I ever prayed before. I never prayed like this, but I, I'm always worrying about them. 
And so I sat there and wrote a sort of like lullaby prayer for his life. Just the kind of things that we all probably wish yeah. for our children. And um wasn't meant to go on the album and I played it to the, because we'd nearly finished, played it to the producer and he said, oh, we have to fit that in somewhere. So he gets his song, which I'm sure when he's 18, he's going to be so embarrassed. By. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, get, I had to do it now. <laughs> what is your biggest fear as a mum? Um, well, as we talked about, mm. is, you know, something happening to me or Andrew. And then I think the, I think it's, it is the communication between us. Yeah. I think it's really important to open up the pathway of communication from a young age. I always want my children to be able to talk to me. Mm. Um, weirdly, my husband is much better at it than I am. And I think it's maybe because he's American, that he's okay. used to talking about his feelings. Every, he sort of doesn't have some of the barriers that maybe I, I do. So when Aaliyah is freaking out about something and mm. she's having a difficult time, he's really good at sitting her down and saying, what do you feel? Why did you do that? And I'm hoping to continue to do that with her, you know. So I think especially with her, the mum-daughter relationship is so important mm -hmm. that when she's a teenager, I really, I just want to make sure that I'm a mum that she can talk to. Yeah. Um, when you can't, I think in these times as well, you kind of, you hear so many stories and you can't help but, I think we're very conscious of how things have an effect and how talking having creating bonds open that conversation it's so important yeah and uh, you know i think especially as a mum you can't help but hear stories of young boys who haven't felt like they could talk or you know yeah. and, and it just completely breaks your heart and and you never want to feel like that's well no parent does but you try all you can yeah to yeah. get uh, talking exactly and i think that you know with I don't know what, by the time our children are, you mm. know, in their teens, I'm hoping that sort of the social media thing will have been handled a little bit better yeah. in that we'll, we'll understand how to tackle the bullying and stuff mm. like that. But that kind of stuff worries me. Having a daughter worries me in terms of image, her, her yeah. image, her confidence. Um, because that's the thing, I would never, ever think that you have any problems in that area because you are so beautiful in every single way do you know what but do you know what i mean so it's really interesting that that's one of your worries and that that, yeah. you, that must feel a pressure for you to f always feel like you're you're Catherine jenkins yeah and i, I but i i feel also that it's sort of like i it's, it's funny you say that i think when you look at people's social media it's often so not true yeah yeah, yeah. people put their perfect lives on social media but they rarely put you know, the crappy things that happened to yeah. them that day. And so I think it's just really important to try and show her that, yeah, okay, I, I know people who are projecting this very happy life yeah. and that marriage might not be working out, this, but whatever. You can't take it for, fa for face value and you mm -hmm. can't look to it to make you happy. No. So I think it's like something that I, I really hope that we will have... Maybe maybe they'll look at us and think it was crazy that we uh, we documented everything. <laughs> Do you reckon it's going to go the other, the other way? Everyone's just closed down. No, thank you. <laughs> Why are we all posting selfies? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bizarre, isn't it? I like to go the other way and I just post photos of me with no makeup on because then if people see yeah. me, I'm like, hi, I've got yeah. makeup on today. Yeah, and that exactly. That, I mean, that, that is the right way to do it, yeah. you know. And I feel like with my my Instagram account is usually all to do with, you know, my my performances and my job, so they are quite, like, well, that, it's glamorous. Well, it's part of that world, isn't yeah. it? It's, you know... Yeah, um, but it's teaching Aaliyah that that's not, that's not normal. Yeah. Well, that it's okay to just have yeah. your comfy days and stuff. Yeah. Mm. And what's been the biggest surprise of motherhood? The the amount of, of love. I know everybody tells you that, but yeah. it is the overwhelming love, the fact that, you would do, you wake up, for me, I wake up and I'm so tired, but I still find I've got more energy than I ever did before because you see their face mm. and you somehow pull it out the bag because you have to, because they are, come on, what's today? <laughs> and I, and I, I love that. I do. I, I genuinely feel that this is the biggest gift that's ever happened to me. And so um, I hope I'm around a long time to see it. Oh. <laughs> you're going to set me off again um, right uh, we finished each episode with three sentences you're going to you're going to complete the sentence for me okay being a mum means my world 
everything. <laughs> um, uh, since having children, I am a lot calmer, a lot more patient. I'm a lot more understanding. And I'm happy when I'm singing The Greatest Showman to Aaliyah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're both on the verge of tears, but I don't really know why. Do you know what? This is so lovely. Can I just come and do this every week with you? It's so lovely. It's just like, I feel like we're in our little bubble of, oh, just thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's been so lovely. <laughs> if I didn't make you cry too much. <laughs> Why would this take, Catherine? But thank you. <laughs> this podcast was brought to you by Fisher Price. Fisher Price recognises that every child is unique and in developing toys that are filled with imagination and excitement help little ones to grow as they're introduced to the world around them.